Hello, my name is Victor Lopez, and in this video, we're going to continue building Python cards. Python cards is this service I'm working on that helps you learn Python using spaced repetition. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do some live coding, but actually what I'm doing is open sourcing the library I built to uh, implement the space repetition algorithm in Python cards. Python cards will show you cards like this one here, and you will try to recall what the answer is for this card, show the answer, and then you give it some feedback of either again, hard, good, or easy. Depending on how well you remembered it, you will be prompted to review this same card either one minute from now, six minutes from now, one day or four days from now. This is very similar to what Anki does. Anki is a very, well, this is Anki web, but this is a, a very, very uh, common space repetition uh, software that you can install in your computer. It also has some versions for Android and, and iOS. And I took their algorithm, which is explained here in a little bit of a convoluted way in their website. I, I took the classic algorithm because it's much simpler. Anki, Anki offers many more advanced features so you can tweak all of the parameters of the algorithm. For Python cards, I wanted to start very, very, very simple. So today I'm going to show how I implemented this uh, algorithm that calculates the next interval depending on the answer of a question. And I will also show how I open sourced this uh, code. I've created this simple space repetition Python module. So you or anyone can use it uh, if they want to implement something similar. So first of all, let me state the, the goals of this, of this module. I want it to be very, very simple. I want it to have same defaults, so I don't want to make it like super configurable. Maybe if you want to configure it, you want to just take the implementation, change some parameters manually or implement your own algorithm. I wanted this to be the as simple as possible. Here you have the whole implementation. This is 116 lines. I think today we're going to try to make it even shorter if, if, if possible. So let's see. Let's see how this works. First, let me make me smaller. So let's let's first see how this how this works. And then I'm thinking I'm going to refactor this code a little bit. So if we uh, import card, there's this card uh, object uh, class that we have here. It, there's a single class card. So we can create a new card and card has this due times. We're going to change this, this, these names, which has, as you would expect for the first time, a time delta of 60 seconds. That is one minute. 360 seconds, six, six minutes, 600 seconds, uh, that's 10 minutes, and this is four days. Maybe these <laughs> options are different here because this is the, the demo. Anyway, you could press again on this card and you would get a new card, which it's a behavior that I'll probably also change. And then we have the same thing. If you press uh, c.easy, for example, then you would have the due times of c of, of the new card are 10 minutes, 4 days, 10 days, 15 days. We have some tests also. So I have some tests where you uh, create the cards and you try the different answers and see that the result uh, works. So let's look at the code and we can we can go through the code a little bit and we can I will refactor the code also a little bit. Because I well, I mean, we're open sourcing this thing, so let's try to make it as easy as possible uh, for people to understand. So and I also want to change the API a little bit. So first of all, we could see that this this card has different statuses. So it's learning, reviewing or relearning. Uh, you could understand this as, as initially the card is in learning mode, so you don't know it, you're learning it, then it uh, advances to reviewing, which is once you have learned it or seen it a couple of times, you're reviewing it. And if you fail to remember it, so you press again, then you are relearning it 
and quickly you go to review again. There's these four answers, again, hard, good, and easy. And there are some of these intervals, which we can see a little bit uh, later what that means. So the first thing I don't like, I don't like this due times uh, function because it has an array of time deltas, but it doesn't say what they mean. So actually, I want to re-implement implement a new function, options self, that kind of returns a dictionary, I think. And I think I want to make it, you know, again, uh, this is not what I want. Uh, so it would be so self.options uh, so self.options this one returns this 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 option. So what we want to do is self.options we want to zip, create a dictionary of zipping all of these possible answers. So again, hard, good, and easy with the actual options, right? I think if we if we actually do that here, we could test it in the uh, well, not self. C dot options. We will have this. Uh, this again. This is a card object. Why is this a card object? Oh, this is dot due for o in this thing. Uh, Let's see. Okay, so here we have again hard, good, and easy. I think this makes it a little bit easier to 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 manage. And also, the next thing I was thinking. So. I want to remove this um, this due times. Now let's see what these options does, and let's see what the due does. So what is due? Due is a time delta that a card has, and initially, well, it could be empty, and then we're creating this time delta with different due times. Mm, the due time. However, so the due time, what is the due time used for? It's used here and then it's used, so it's a setup when you create the card and then it's used only in the options. So probably we don't want to have this. We might probably refactor this too. Anyway, so here we have this, this, these options here, and I think we could call these answers, right? So this is a, a kind of a magic variable, right? List that we have here, and we could have it here in answers. And another thing I wanted to change in the API is instead of having this again hard good easy and so on let's see what copilot has to say uh, the, we do want that this is actually so we'll also keep that i wanted to answer given a name why do we want this because now uh, instead of having this list of all the options of uh, of the times now we have actually these words again hard good easy and it's i think it's better to have this answer given this name we could here assert so assert uh, answer in answers uh, 
we assert that the answer is actually actually exists. So we say, okay, card c dot answer uh, blah. This will give an er an error. Or oh, let's say if. No, doesn't matter. But if we answer good, okay, it doesn't work. Uh, let's let's look at why. It doesn't work because we and try to find this index. What we should do here is self dot answers dot index answer. Let's see what happens if we actually didn't put the assert. We create the card. We answer good. Okay, that's good. What happens if we answer good? It, the assert fails. What would happen if we remove this? Probably, I'll move this. This. up here so you can see it better so what happens if we do this okay go not in list let's keep the the assertion so now we can remove all of these public methods so we keep the options and the answer uh, this one this is not actually a public method And let's remove the do the due times. So here, what we are doing is we are offering these options to the user. C dot options that has this dictionary of again, hard, good, and easy, and then we can answer uh, again, for example. Now, the thing that's happening is that this, again, is returning a new card. And I'm not sure this is what we actually want. So how, are, how could you use this, this library? I mean, this library is so simple. Now, one thing you could do is you collect all the answers, like the historical answers that some user has, has, uh, has had, or you yourself, you're implementing an app for yourself. And then if you have, you know, 30 answers that you gave like good bad good again easy good good easy you could rerun all of them and then see the due times of this of this card uh, but creating a new card for each of this returning a new card will make your code look like this all the time update the card and you don't really want to so why would you want to use the old card once you have already answered something right so i'm not sure i'm not 100 sure about that and i think I will, we will going to we're going to change that too so another problem we have is that um, i have to to run all the I, I have to fix all the tests because this uh, everything is broken now because we don't have we have changed the api but let's look at the tests a little bit later so I'm starting changing the code and then I'm going to to go through all, all of all of the parts of this code. So first of all, here we are in options and we are going we have seen these options. If learning learning options The interesting thing of returning a card is that we're using actually new cards for each of these of these things. So what is learning doing? Okay, this creates a new learning card. Hmm. So the way options works is it gives you, you know, the next card that would that you would uh, have if you clicked any of these four options. It actually creates four new cards. Like what would have like the state of this card uh, after you click all of this, and then you take the due the due time. So can we 
simplify this code somehow. So we have these options, learning options, reviewing options, relearning options, if the status, depending on the status of the card. So, and then we have this again, hard, good, easy, which we can get rid of. So these are the statuses, actually, and these are the answers, which is not the same thing. The status is where the, where the card is, and the answer, of course, what you what you the feedback that you give. Mm. Let's have a, a, some more parameters. So I'm I'm seeing some some magic numbers here, for example. Uh, or let's let's understand a little bit how the code works. So depending on the status, we have these learning options, reviewing options, and relearning options. And these options, these three functions here, these are creating the four options depending on your answer. So both for, for learning cards, for reviewing cards, and for relearning -re cards. So imagine you're reviewing, right? And this is the, the actual, uh, what the algorithm explains in this, in this website. So if you are learning a card for the first time, you have four options. Again, hard, good, and easy. If you press again on a learning card, you are again on a learning card. So this is learning, step zero, minutes one. If you press hard, you're on step one. So this is like initially there's step zero, one, and two already goes to reviewing, six minutes. If on learning you press good, then you move to step one, 10 minutes. If the step was zero. So if the step was zero, you go to step one. If the step was one, you go to days one. If you press easy, you go directly to four days. For reviewing, right? For reviewing, if you fail to remember it with, again, the ease is decreased, relearning 10 minutes. If reviewing hard, then this uh, interval is multiplied by this hard interval. So we see this hard interval, which is a parameter that is 1.2, multiplies this interval and you decrease the ease or you multiply with the same, uh, with uh, the interval with this and you keep the same ease or you uh, give an easy bonus, which is 1.5. So this is how this algorithm works. Uh, I know I, I'm not explaining like into detail all of the single, all, all of the parameters, but you can get an idea and you can read the code is very, very, very short of what happens when you, when you do each of these again, hard, good and easy for each of the learning, reviewing and relearning options. So, uh, let's see what else we can improve here. I think we could have some, some, uh, more parameters. So this would be reviewing uh, is hard decrease or delta 0 0.15. And reviewing is easy delta 0 0.15. So this is like the this this is how Let me rename this. So this will be reviewing art is delta and reviewing easy is delta. So this is how we change this is parameter. So each card has a status, learning, reviewing, relearning, a step for the learning and relearning um, uh, statuses. It has a step zero or one. 
it has an interval. This interval is what, um, like the time, roughly the time for the next uh, review. So it could be like one day or three days or five days or some minutes. And then it has an ease. This ease starts being uh, 2.5. So we could have also this, uh, let's look for this 2.5. Uh, reviewing is is 2.5 it's like the initial is that we have is 2.5 initial is 2.5 later on you modify the is with either uh, with a delta Right. If it's hard, you you make it uh, more, and if it's easy, you make it. If it's uh, hard, you make you 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 decrease it, and if it's easy, you increase it. We could maybe is delta. Maybe we could use that. So instead of having this, have is delta. Uh, we might want to uh, explain this a little bit. Here we could say amount to add substitutes if answer is hard easy. That's exactly what we, what we're doing. Mean is. Let's see what the easy bonus is. Easy bonus is uh, multiplied for easy answers. Exactly what, what this is. So easy bonus is what we multiply when the answer is easy for a reviewing card. Then we have mean is, mm, that's kind of obvious what it is, and hard interval Hard interval uh, is the multiplier for the interval if. So we don't care about these, it just multiplies with the. Uh, used instead of is. That's what that is. Let's see. Uh, if we can use, can we use here like initial is? Let's see if we can use this kind of uh, variable here. So this is the initial is. Let's see the easy bonus again. So we can have here interval multipliers, and here we can have is values. So this is the mean is, the initial is. Let's not comment this. And then we have the is delta. Or let's say uh, hard is delta easy is delta so if it's hard we could make it minus 0 .0 0 0.0.15 right so Instead of doing that, we can have this. Uh, what is this delta? So we sum the hard is delta. It's important that we're summing because we are because 
because we have make it, made it uh, negative here. So the easy is delta and the hard is delta has this uh, is applied to the is. So when you are reviewing, this is actually creating a reviewing card. So this uh, does days um, and is. And instead of days, we could, yeah, okay, it's days. So days and is. That's what you change in reviewing. So this is days is. Uh, let's have Let's have it here. Days is makes, makes it makes it simple simpler to interpret. Days is so let's format this thing. So Trying to remove all of these magic numbers, uh, we still have some magic numbers here, 1, 6, 1, 4, and so on. 0, 1, learning. Hmm. Reviewing has this initial is. The initial is is applied when uh, when you create a new card, right? So probably we can remove it from here. This initial is, is applied when you come from learning. So you, uh, from learning, you create a card either if you answer easy or if you are here and you answer good when you're on step one. And there you set this, the initial is for reviewing. So I think more or less we have uh, interval multipliers, hard interval, easy bonus, multiplier for easy answers, hard interval. We could keep this. And the easy bonus, you kind of easier to understand what that means. Here in relearning, oh, this is, a, this is another delta. So this would be a, a, again, is delta. And the again is, is delta is minus 0 0.2. Exactly that. So here we can see this, uh, these deltas that are applied to is and we have uh, 0 0.2, this, this and this. We could also have this, uh, let's say, is deltas. We could make it like this, is deltas 0 is delta 1, is delta I'm not sure. I think I'm going to keep these separate, these separate values. So we have the again is delta, the easy is delta, and the hard is delta, which is 0. Uh, sorry, the good is delta is 0, and the hard is delta. So hmm. maybe we could try to run the tests and see what they say. We could also check this, this, uh, well, the status. I, I don't like this. I'm not sure I like this. Uh, self.learning. I think kind of the statuses. I like this better. No, learning, reviewing, relearning. So the statuses are 
are used here, status, learning, reviewing, blah, blah, blah. So it's used when you create a new card, the status, reviewing, relearning, and then it's used here to see which options function you need to use for each uh, for each status so you if you are in learning you use learning options if you're in reviewing you use, use reviewing option and if you're in relearning you use relearning options so may, maybe one thing we could do Hmm. Let's see how we can. Make this simpler. So I could do. So. Uh, methods. Let's see if we can make this simple. So self dot learning options, self dot reviewing options. These are the methods actually, right? So you would call you would call this guy, right? Self dot statuses dot index self dot status. This is what you would do. Something like that. You would get either of these three functions. You would check the status that you have and you would call it. Let's see if that actually compiles and makes any sense. So if we import this C equals card C dot options. Value one is not in list. Okay, because the status has this weird va values which should be learning reviewing and relearning it works it works so we might want to have this here like this you know these are the three statuses mm. Why do we have these statuses? Well, the statuses are used exclusively to find these options. And status is not is used for nothing else, right? So we could actually say, okay, we could actually do that. So do self.learning set of options. We could also do this this way with a dictionary. If we do this with a dictionary, we get rid of this list here. And then we see dot answer uh, good. And that works. So we Actually, what we did is we replaced these ifs with just a call to this dictionary. And there's this learning, reviewing, relearning, and so on. The other thing we get is that the status has a human readable value. So it's learning. It's not uh, one, which was before. So here we can say, okay, status is learning. Sorry for that. Do we want to have some quotes around this thing? I don't know. Learning zero, none, none, do none. We can have these quotes. So. 
learning, reviewing, relearning. Again, good and easy. We're using these statuses here. So it makes probably sense to have this as separate. These are separate values and this is just an array of answers. Because we're not using these answers by themselves by themselves anywhere. So regarding the options, actually, what happens with the options? So we're using options in two in two places, right? First in the answer, and we can uh, get rid of this thing, right? So answer is actually doing this, returning the option. So we can remove this class, this, this function also. So C dot answer good. And this works. So we remove this function that just implemented this thing. So how do we have how do we handle this options thing? The options give us the four next cards and in answer we are just we are just returning this card and in options we are just returning the two times right instead of uh, instead of returning the uh, so now I understand why I decided to call this due times. Uh, but still, still, I'm not I'm not uh, sure that is the best idea. Um, if we just return the underscore options, which are like the actual cards that have the actual due time, I think it wouldn't be as good for the for the user of the of the library. I think it's better to return just the due times. But maybe we, we want to actually call it due times instead of answer. And then the answer, one thing you could do is you could do, let's see, self equals this. Would this work? C dot answer good and now this is learning no this is not working it's better to return one new card okay this returns a new card Because this is what we're doing is the, the, the learning options is creating a new card for its thing. And then we are taking for the due times, we are just taking the. Uh, the option dot due. So let's see what else we could do. It might seem that we're like turning in circles around this library, but actually I think it makes sense to think all of this through to make it like the most, you want to make it the most obvious. So if someone wants to use this, it should be obvious how, how to use it. So Actually, there are also a bunch of asserts here, which probably don't make much sense. So these asserts are good because this is, so the learning options uh, step is not none. Uh, there's this interval, but we might, we could also put this in here, right? So uh, like learning. So you want learning, you want the step to not be none because you're also uh, if a step is zero and so on, right? But here you could also put these asserts inside learning. Uh, 
or here step is none in reviewing options. So reviewing options, step is none, uh, but step is none because if we're in reviewing options, then we're in reviewing status, and if we're in reviewing status, the step is none. So actually these asserts don't really make like a whole lot of sense. These would probably be better tests than just... Uh, but again, step is known, interval is not known, is is not known. I, I don't want to remove all of the asserts just now. I think they, they, they had a purpose when I was developing this and Python doesn't have all these guarantees that you might have. So I think it makes some sense to, to have this. So I don't know what, what else we could do. There's one thing that I like, which is this due time. So we have this due time inside the card, but we're not actually using We're not actually using it. Let's see how we set the due time. The due time is set for learning. It, it is these minutes. For reviewing, it is these days. And for learning, it is these minutes. Just. And these days is actually the interval. It's the minutes that we set in learning. And it's the minutes that we set in relearning. It's like it's nowhere else. But we're also using this due time only for the options. So when we check the options, we check the due time. Right? So and then for the answers, we actually get like the actual card that we that we want. Another thing we could do is we could implement all of this in a single in a single function, right? So we could say instead of having all of these options and stuff, let's see how let's let's check that implementation. Sometimes you just need to test it. So we would do if sta uh, self dot status equals. Let's see if Copilot picks it up. If we are in self dot learning, then we return this thing. The only problem is that we will have one more indentation. And I remember I wanted to prevent that. But the learning the learning options are these. We also get rid of all of the all of the indents. If we're reviewing or re reviewing, we return this thing here. And if we are relearning, we return this thing here, which I guess it picked it up correctly. But let's make sure. So these are the options. Let's see how this. So this is from 105 to this is roughly 29 lines. And this is roughly 57 almost 50 lines. Of course, we got rid of all the asserts, but it's it also gives like a compact view of the actual algorithm, right? Of what, what it is doing. If we use this, does this work? Well, let's see the options first. Yeah, it gives more or less the same. And if we answer good, I guess it, it it works, right? If we do C equals this, two days, one day, and so on. Reviewing, I think we're going to remove this thing here. So maybe we want, we remove this hack of the dictionary. We remove all of the asserts, which we might better check in the and we have like a single function i think i like it better 
I think I like it better. It's more, more compact. So here, this is the actual implementation of the algorithm. This is what actually gives you these four cards. And then we have this helper functions, which are learning, reviewing, and relearning that simplify all of this code because you already you give it the, the step and the minutes and it just works uh, directly so if we are reviewing we return this if we are learning we return this if we're reviewing if we are relearning these are the three statuses that we need to handle it's very easy the relearning one so it's if you press again it's one minute if you say hard it's six minutes Otherwise, it's good one day and easy four days. And then you keep the same ease as before. What about the interval? Well, the interval is the days that you that you set. So this is the, the days, the interval, and the due time. OK, so now we have these options. And now if we want if you want the the options, you just zip it with the answers. So we zip it with, with these values again, hard, good, and easy. And then if you want the answer, we check that the answer exists. And then we just get the options and take the one that we that we picked. What about this thing? Relearning. Why is it, if easy is none? self dot is um, if is is non self dot is what is something is taking all my ram i guess or my cpu i guess it's obs <laughs> okay so um, relearning has this default is of self dot is here we're setting a different is let's is self dot is is self dot is we need to try to make this uh, as oh my god consistent as possible so if we just are requiring to set the ease everywhere else we should better require it here too and regarding the relearning okay we start with step zero we're actually not using the step so let's put it in the end But we might want to, to to have it in the future. So the steps, this is steps is kind of step means that you override all of these interval things and you just um, take this step as a reference. So if it's a kind of hard coded. So if you say it's one minute, ten minutes, and one day, then you you that's what you take. So kind of what we're doing in learning here, it is. Uh, one minute, six minutes, ten minutes, one day. That is or four days. This is like the hard coded uh, values that that we have. We might want to put this into into another configure configurable value here, right? So here we have the is values uh, learning. Let's let's keep it for now. So we simplified the learning by putting this self dot is in the relearning too, and we just got under one hundred lines. That is cool. I wanted to go, go under under one hundred lines, and we actually added some functionality. So we cut twenty percent of the lines while adding some stuff. So we added all of these parameters uh, separately. We added the options function actually returns a dictionary with the answers it's not just a list of things and of course we removed some things 
I think now it's time to check the tests. So uh, uh, Python test this thing, everything fails, right? So <laughs> let's test this thing, uh, learning. Let's test this thing. So what is this check values thing? Uh, check values again. Check values again equals again. What is this thing? Check values card has. Okay, this this is kind of checking the four options, right? So it's taking the again. Uh, let's say. How can we how can we make this like super simple? So we could say card options a eight g e equals if we do that. What is the attribute? Get attribute. From A, from H, from G. We're actually getting this. This is a like a small hack. I also I also made. Get attribute. Card dot options dot again. So for K in card dot answers. So we will make so we would make options equals card dot options. And this would be options K. For K in answer, something like that. Time delta doesn't have. Oh, because we're now we're taking the time, the times. This would better be options, right? Uh, this is probably it. Okay, all the tests are passing. <laughs> this is because I I I actually made the tests. Pretty well done. So let's see what's what the change is because maybe we can just make it we can make it even simpler. Uh, uh, this is because I made all the tests to depend on this on this single function that checks the values for all of these values and and then uh, for the rest I made I made some checks of reviewing how it should update these things given these parameters and so on so here for example we could also change this again delta hard delta this is card easy delta this is what we're doing if we test this it passes so we removed all of this all of this initial card dot Initial is car dot initial is. I think that's what we should be checking for. So we actually have these tests more or less parameterized for all of this. And here uh, we're checking this attribute. How could we? Um, let's let's call it option again. Option hard option good option easy right at least i think it should pick this up option again come on copilot you should you should pick this up if it doesn't pick oh no i involuntarily closed my editor so anyway, we can we can type doesn't hurt doesn't hurt to type a little bit. Option hard, option good, and option easy. 
let's test this thing. Everything passes. So to summarize what we have done, we have taken this library. I will push this to GitHub right away. You can find it in my GitHub here, the Lopez Ferrando special petition. So we're going to, to, to commit these changes. So let's see. Simple split repetition and the tests. The test was very simple too. We, we don't we didn't go through all the tests. But to summarize, in case you've skipped the video, which obviously you might have skipped it, it was just some hard work that I was doing. But we have this SM2 library, and this explains, uh, sorry, algorithm that Anki, like the uh, classic Anki algorithm, that has these features of it's based on SM2, but has some different. There's four choices. Apparently, SM2 had six choices. Uh, answering cards later than scheduled will be factored into the next interval calculation. I'm not doing that. I don't take into account the time when you when you do that. But then it has the same uh, kind of uh, 1.2 hard interval. 15 points and 15 points is the delta that we have here. The hard is delta, the easy is delta. And then it has this uh, easiest will never be decreased below 130%. That's what we have the mean is that we have defined here. So this is more or less an ANC implementation. It's very, very, very short, 100 lines. It's very simple to use. So if you if we open again the Python REPL, we have this. You create a card, and then you see the options. OK, again, hard, good, and easy. These are just the, <coughs> the times. We could maybe we could make it due uh, times might be the, 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 the name. Uh, new times. Okay, and then you can answer uh, hard. And you get a new card. So it's super easy if you want to re re run over it, you would say, so rewrite it, you, you would work on the same card and then this is hard, maybe you say, okay, no, this is actually easy for me. So now you're in reviewing, there's no step. If you say, oh, actually, again, I, 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 I forgot it. Now you're relearning on step zero. So this is basically what this library does. It has same defaults taken from Anki, and it's very simple to use. So. Let me commit this thing, uh, refactor, library, refactor library. We, we did some things. We extract uh, constants, join all, all option generating code in a single function, and we uh, Keep a single answer method instead of for. Again, art, etc. Right? These are the things we did mostly. And we also removed the asserts. Probably not necessary. Okay. Let me push this. I also have this readme that I'm writing, but I don't I don't have it written yet. Uh, so we will push it some other time. If we come here, I guess we will already see the new commit. And as you see, I have this published in, in the Python package index. So this is 0 0.1.0. Probably I will move to 0 0.2 once this is like 100% uh, stable or as much as, as I can right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you... this module is useful for some people out there uh, playing with space repetition algorithms and implementations and, and so on. 
and see you next time. Remember to join the waitlist of Python cards and see you some other day. Bye-bye.